Welcome to Shady J's Garage, where together we're going to work to keep history on the road. In today's video, we're going to go over a procedure to replace the rear leaf springs of realistically any 1979 to 1987 Chevy or GMC truck. Now the parts are going to vary depending on the model that you have, but the procedures remain largely the same. In fact, the procedure is so similar to most of these GM and Chevy trucks that any rear leaf spring vehicle, you can probably use this video to guide you through it. But I'm going to focus on the specifics that you would need to understand and tips and tricks that deal with some of these older vehicles and some of the challenges you may discover when conducting a rear leaf spring removal and replacement on an older vehicle. Now, if you're new to my videos, check the bottom if there's just a specific spot that you're stuck on. I'll have a video timestamp to different parts of the procedure. And if you ever have any questions about the tools or equipment that we're using, I'll have links to all the different things so that you can purchase anything that you're missing for your garage in order to get this done. Now, as a reminder, the parts that I'm purchasing are specific to Franken truck here, which we'll go over in a second. Uh, so you'll need to go through on Amazon or Rock Auto or some other site like that and look up specific parts for your vehicle, make and model, depending on what you need to do. Now for tools, you're going to want a solid three ton hydraulic floor jack. You're also going to want two 12 ton jack stands that are going to give you the stability needed when you lift your vehicle. You want a solid set of wheel chocks and to manipulate everything in place, you're going to need a mallet or a big freaking hammer your favorite lubricant and penetrating oil, such as depicted here, a good pry bar set with a tapered end crowbar, and you're gonna need a good set of SAE and metric wrenches that are oversized, 17 millimeter and higher and seven eighths inch and higher. You're also gonna need a half inch socket set of about the same sizes, and you're gonna need a solid torque wrench that can get you up to 140 foot pounds of torque dependent upon the size of U-bolt that you're using. Now some optional tools you can go without, but I highly recommend is picking yourself up a portable air compressor and an impact ratchet and impact socket set, as well as some fine grain sandpaper, or sturdy shop towels. You can go without them, but this will make the tear down a whole lot easier. And here you're gonna see the parts we'll be using today. Again, you'll want to make sure that you verify that the parts you purchase are gonna be perfect for your make and model of truck. In this particular case, as you'll see when we lift the truck up, Franken truck has a combination of C10, C20, and even K30 parts. Luckily, the C20 1984 uh, equipment will mostly work for the back end, so that's what you'll see linked below. I would highly recommend that while you're taking the time to replace your leaf springs, you go ahead and replace all the hardware that's associated with it as well, so that you ensure you get the best ride possible out of the vehicle when you replace it. First step for setting it up for lift, Obviously, is make sure the vehicle is in park. If you happen to have a manual truck, go ahead and make sure it's locked in gear as well. If your vehicle is also four-wheel drive, make sure the four-wheel drive is engaged so that it better locks your front wheels. But at least make sure that the vehicle is in park before you begin. Next, adequately chalk your vehicle. Now, if you don't have four-wheel drive to lock the front wheels better, highly recommend using some sort of implement in order to engage the brakes and keep them engaged to give you a greater level of security when you do lift the vehicle. With your safety measures in place, it's time to lift the truck. With your jack stands on either side, go ahead and put your floor jack under the rear differential and begin to lift up. Once tension started to lift off the tires, if you're not using an air compressor, now's a good time to break the torque free on your lug nuts. Then go ahead and begin lifting the truck the rest of the way up high enough so that you can place it onto the jack stands. Now, when aligning your jack stands into the vehicle, you want to make sure you keep it towards the rear third of the vehicle. As these older frames, you don't want any surprises if you place too much stress or tension too close to the middle of the vehicle. Also look for things under the vehicle that will allow you to easily line the jack stands up to ensure they're even. In this case, you could use things like the mufflers like I have, or special clips and fasteners for things like the parking brake may allow you to easily align without too much effort. Once your jack stands are set, you can go ahead and slowly and carefully preferably with spotters, lower the rear differential so that you can begin ensuring that the frame seats perfectly onto the jack stands. Once you see that it has caught the jack stands, double check your work before continuing to lower and ensure the rear differential will lower far enough but allow you to also prevent the tire from touching the floor again. Now, whether you're using an impact or a socket wrench, you wanna go ahead and take all the lug nuts off to go ahead and remove the wheel from one side of the truck. But for safety, 
Always keep the other wheel on until you're ready to work on that side. And do everything you can to minimize the amount of time that you're going to spend under the truck at any point during the procedure of removing the spring. This is very important to keep this as safe as possible as you complete this procedure. So the next thing you want to do is just take a look at what you got. Now most of these older springs are actually quite resilient. However, you can tell visually this one's in need of some help. But one of the first things that typically goes is actually the bushings located up at the connection points of each side of the spring itself. These bushings tend to go first, including the bushing that's actually on the shackle, uh, because they take the brunt of the beating and being that they are not made of Detroit steel, they seem to not last quite as long. You can always replace those if the spring is in good shape. It's a little bit of work to do it, but it will save you a lot of money over buying a new spring. However, most of the time when you see springs looking like this, it's time to replace them. So the first step is we need to make sure that we break all the rust, dirt, and grime away as best as possible to give us even a chance of breaking these bolts free. So you're gonna wanna take your favorite brand of penetrating oil and go ahead and start to soak very liberally all of the different points that we're gonna to have to break free. It's important to do this because it will save you a lot of heartache and time as well as just muscle soreness if you can go ahead and let the penetrating oil do some of the work for you. Once you have soaked it, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and take a water break now before the real back breaking work begins. Before taking the spring off, we'll need to remove the shock. The shock's attached to a frame mounting bolt that goes through the frame with a fastener holding the actual shock onto the frame mounting bolt. You'll first need to remove that fastener using two wrenches, and it shouldn't take a whole lot of effort unless it's been over torched by the previous user. Once you've gone ahead and removed that, then you'll have to get a little bit more into the truck in order to remove the frame mounting bolt from the truck itself. After you've broken and removed the fastener on the frame side of the frame mounting bolt and backed it off by hand, just keep in mind that as you reach up in there, there will also be washers. It's important to go ahead and remove these washers too in order to make it easy to pull the frame mounting bolt through and remove it completely. Once that's complete, you'll be able to either loosen or fully remove the top part of the shock. Now that we've at least loosened the frame mounting point, we'll move to the bottom mounting point for the shock. Much the same way, there'll be a nut on one side and a bolt head on the other. Using two wrenches or socket wrenches, you'll go ahead and break it free and then begin backing it all the way off. And as a reminder, once you are able to start backing off by hand, don't forget to remove the washers that are in place to help buffer the fasteners as well. Once the washer is removed, your mallet and pry bar will come in handy in removing the bolt the rest of the way and then pulling the shock out. Now at this point, there's generally a good order of things. You want to first start by removing the main plate uh, on the U-bolts that's going to be holding your leaf spring onto your rear axle. After removing that, you'll want to go ahead and switch to removing both the shackle and the connection point at the rear end of the truck for the leaf spring. And then you'll want to finish by coming back up to the front to remove the front mounting point. At that point, with some tools for manipulation, you should be able to go ahead and remove the leaf spring completely. Most factory and older U-bolts are gonna to be too tall to slip a socket over, so you're gonna to need to break them free using a wrench. Now likely to save your hand, you're gonna to have to use some sort of extension or breaker bar, whether the half jack handle, uh, lead pipe, or in this case, a motorcycle muffler. But either way, as you break each one free, be very cautious and keep an eye on the jack stand so that you don't put too much pressure and cause shear on the jack stands until you feel the satisfying click. Once you can break each one free, you can then back them off by hand a little bit at a time on each side. You want to continue to back them off enough so that you'll actually be able to start to slip a socket over them and then take the rest of them off with either a socket wrench or your impact ratchet until you can finally remove all of the fasteners from each U-bolt on all four points. Once the nuts are removed, use a mallet or BFH to knock the U-bolts out. Then set the plate aside in the same direction it was oriented on the truck so that you replace it in the exact same orientation. Next, we'll remove the leaf spring from the rear shackle. You'll need to use a wrench to brace the nut on the back side of the leaf bolt. And then once that's in place, go ahead and use either your regular ratchet or your impact ratchet to start the process of removing the leaf bolt. Once the leaf bolt's removed, if you are replacing your shackle, you'll want to complete the same process on the leaf bolt that's running through the base of the shackle. 
shack will have some play, but by not leaving it connected to the leaf spring above, it won't fully rotate around the leaf spring and will catch against the backstop of the shackle mounting point. That bolt can be a little bit more difficult to get out, so continue to use a ratchet to spin it so that you can fully remove it as you pull. Once that's fully removed, simply just pull the shackle out by hand. Now you can see here how this bushing is in absolutely terrible shape coming off of the shackle, which is a really important reason why you always want to go ahead and replace the shackles as well. Because if the bushings are going to be worn in your springs, it's highly likely a shackle is done at the same time. And that's one more connection point that's going to create a lot of vibration and sway whenever you're driving. Now when it comes to the front mounting point for the leaf spring, it's very easy to access the outside bolt, but the nut in the back is actually covered by this plate. The difficulty is there's really only two places to access it. A very small port right here close to the frame or to come in over the top but depending on the size of your wrench you'll notice that the bed of the truck will get in the way so you got to get a little bit creative but do the best you can to find the right spot to reach in and get it braced so that you can take it off from the front the leaf bolt removes just like all the rest of them so you'll need to get in and get a good grip on the nut in the back side against the frame sometimes the air ratchets can be a little bit too much for this so if it's shaking your wrench free frequently, then go ahead and switch to a socket wrench and back it out the more traditional way. Once you are able to back it out enough that you can go ahead and remove the washer in the back, you'll be able to do the same trick as far as using a socket, whether on a ratchet or not, to go ahead and spin the bolt out the rest of the way. And then we'll be ready to actually remove the spring. So come in and very carefully with your arms braced, start to lift the spring off of the axle. You want to tilt it to about a 45 degree angle towards you and then start pushing it towards the back of the truck. That'll allow you to pull the short end out and very carefully get it around your fender well. And so again, we can see the leaf spring we took off. The bushings themselves are in terrible condition and I would even say the spring obviously looks like it's in terrible condition. There's a lot of play and flex in between the blades and the rebound clips have been cut out on the top for some reason by a previous owner. But you can see this definitely need replaced all the way around but uh, we'll take it to the scrapyard a little bit later. Now we're ready to start the process of installing the new parts. But before we begin, it's handy to go ahead and take some brake cleaner or WD-40 and spray down all of the connection points that you're gonna use and either use steel wool or some sandpaper, or even just a strong shock rag and wipe them down as much as possible to get all the corrosion, dirt, and grime out of there. You don't wanna use anything too abrasive that is gonna damage the mounting surfaces, but you wanna remove all of that gunk in order to get the best tolerances that you can to make it a little easier to mount. Before mounting the spring, you'll need to start with a shackle. This is going to require quite a bit of patience as it's very difficult to mount properly. A combination of rotating it back and forth on the teeth, as well as using things like your mallet or even the tapered end of your crowbar will allow you to seat it. Once it is seated, go ahead and place the bolt through, but do not tighten the backing as you'll want as much flex as possible in all the mounting points until everything is attached. You'll place the spring under the truck in the reverse order of how you took it out. First, you'll place the tail end of the spring under the truck and slide it all the way back at a 45 degree angle, and then bring the front around being careful of your fender. Once you have the front end of the spring around, you'll just need to heave it up and place it up onto the axle, and then do the final touches of trying to get it aligned as best as possible to the mating points. This is obviously much easier with some friends, but can certainly be done on your own if you're careful. Now, before you install any of the new hardware, you wanna make sure that you put a good medium strength thread locker on it, because although the new hardware is definitely made to resist coming apart whenever you're driving, it's never too safe uh, to go ahead and just put some on. So whenever you do, go ahead and apply liberally a bead across the threads, and at that point, just take a gloved hand and make sure to work it in around until you have a good coating. You can certainly have it dripping. I see a lot of people do that, but this is realistically all you need. Patience will be a virtue for all of your mounting points. You'll need to use all of your implements to negotiate the spring into place on each mounting point. A very handy tool is the tapered end of your crowbar, which can be placed into the holes and then gently hammered into place in order to better align each hole. This will do a lot to help get you to a point where you can actually start to put any of the bolts in on either side. But you want to be careful that the tip of the tapered end does not dig into the metal on the inside of the bushing and instead is aligned all the way through the hole so that it better aligns both the spring 
and the mounting point itself. Once you have it lined up close enough that you can go ahead and start the bolt safely without stripping any of the threads, you can use the new hardware as a mounting point holder to ensure you don't lose one side while you continue to manipulate the back side so that you can actually get it all the way through. A good way to do this is to change the angle of the spring by hand or even use the floor jack to change the angle slightly. You'll find that this will align the holes at the last minute a lot easier and a quick tap will finish you off so that you can press the bolt all the way through. Once the bolt's all the way through, it's time to just go ahead and place the hardware finger tight at the back so that you can continue to manipulate the other mounting points without it being torqued all the way down. With the front mounting point secure, the back will be a whole lot easier. Start by using a mallet to tap the shackle to point it directly at the hole on the spring for the leaf bolt. Then you can use the floor jack to adjust the height of the spring by raising it or lowering it so that the hole better aligns to the shackle. From there, continue to use any of the implements necessary to close the distance between the shackle and the leaf spring until you can start your bolt. Once you're able to start the bolt, continue to use the hammer and the pry bars as necessary to align the back side of the spring before tapping it through. You don't want to damage the threads by hammering too hard too early. Once you're able to seat the bolt all the way through, go ahead and attach the hardware to the back and tighten it down without torquing it down because you'll still have more adjustments to make. Now, it just so happens that luckily Frank and Truck lined up pretty well here today, but a lot of times you may end up finding that after mounting to the forward and rear mounting points for the leaf spring, it doesn't quite line up exactly perfect with the mounting block that's located on the rear axle. Don't freak out if that happens. It's very, very common in older vehicles. Now, if it's off more than quarter, half, maybe three quarters of an inch, you got a serious problem. But if it's just slightly off, that's one of the reasons why we don't uh, torque everything down yet because you just have a little bit of play. It's natural for some of these older vehicles, especially if they've been in accidents in the past, to not be 100% straight. You want to make sure that if you catch that though, that you have the vehicle checked for its alignment, not only in the front wheels the next time you have it aligned, but also ensure that the alignment in the back wheels is safe for highway driving. Now in this case, all we're going to do is slowly continue putting pressure against the rear differential from the jack in order to close the gap and ensure that that pin seats in the mounting block, which it has. So at this point, we're ready to go ahead and put the shackle on and the U-bolts, U and then we'll be ready to go. Now, despite our new U-joints being the same bell shape at the bottom, you can see that the old ones are flared out, and this is very common. And what you might find is that when you go to actually place your new correct sized U-bolts, that it won't go quite down around the axle. To fix this, just a quick tug either from the floor or on a vise will give you the tolerance you need to install it. Make sure to replace the plate in the same orientation it came off. Then bring one U-bolt up from the bottom. You'll likely need to use a mallet to go ahead and tap it up a little bit farther. Once you're able to secure one U-bolt, place the washers and the nuts if necessary over the top, and then set the second one in behind it. After using the mallet to tap that into place as well, You'll likely notice that the bell-shaped housing at the bottom doesn't quite meet up yet with the bottom of the axle. That's quite alright. After you have a chance to start tightening it up, it'll start to close the gap. In addition, you may also notice that where you placed your medium strength thread locker hasn't quite gone above the plate yet. That also should rise as you continue to tighten them down. So hand tight first as far down as you can for each of the fasteners on top of the U-bolts in order to help prevent cross-threading. Once you've had all of them down hand tight all the way, go ahead and start to use your socket wrench to tighten them. Just give a little bit of tightness to each one at a time in a star pattern and keep a close eye to ensure that you're not shifting the U-bolts to one side or the other in order to make sure everything goes on straight. Ideally at the end, you should have about the same amount of height of the U-bolt poking out of each one of the fasteners. Once the U-bolts are properly seated, go ahead and get, make it nice and hand tight before you go farther. Before torquing everything down, you're gonna first want to put the whole system under load. You'll do that using the jack by putting a little bit of pressure on the rear differential to raise it so that both sides start to compress together between the left and right side of the drivetrain. So now you can see it's under load. We can actually begin to torque everything down. 
Torque specs are actually going to vary for the U-bolts depending on the width of the U-bolt you're using on your particular application. So make sure that you double check the torque specs that you're supposed to place each U-bolt to according with the manufacturer's guidelines. Once you have that information, go ahead and torque everything down in a star pattern. Once the U-bolts are complete, you'll move on to the front leaf bolt and hit torque. Then on finally to the rear leaf bolt. Once you're able to hit torque specs for the rear leaf bolt, you'll then move on to the shackle bolt. Now, most of these leaf bolts for GM applications of these years are going to be around 75 to 80 foot-pounds of torque, but always double check your manufacturer's specifications. Now, the last step of reinstallation is to go ahead and remount our shock. You'll start first by reinstalling the frame mounting bolt, ensuring that you have a washer on both sides of the frame before you tighten anything down. Once you've made that hand tight, you can actually go ahead and tighten down the part that actually mounts to the frame and torque it to specs. You won't need much play in that as long as you don't torque down the shock at the top yet. Next, ensure that you have the washers for both sides of the shock mounting point against the frame. Once the washer is in place, go ahead and mount and align your shock and then place the washer and fastener on the opposite side. It's important not to actually torque down your shock at this point as you'll need a little bit of play in order to fit it into the rear mounting point, which is notoriously not straight in these older vehicles. Your pry bar is a perfect tool to help compress the shock and get it up and over the top of the bottom shock mounting housing. Once you've placed it inside the housing, you'll need to massage it into place, either by hand or using the mallet, or another good tool for this is your tapered edge crowbar. Once you've been able to align the holes in order to be able to get the bolt in, you'll go ahead and emplace your mounting hardware, and at this point, you're ready to go to go ahead and tighten and torque both the lower shock mounting bolt as well as the final fastener on the outside of the upper shock placement that you did earlier. Here again, patience is a virtue as many times this is going to take a little bit longer than video editing shows you here. And always follow your manufacturer's torque specs on your shocks. Once complete, you can go ahead and wheel your tire back out and get it remounted. Now remember, when re-securing your tire, always to torque your lug nuts down in a star pattern. Then always make sure to take it around the block or down to the grocery store and double check the torque. Don't just do it once. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you found this helpful. And as always, let's work together to keep history on the road where it belongs. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and feel free to leave a comment or send me a message if there's anything that you'd like to see in the future.